Hey guys, it's Charles Jager with Metal. Today I'm going to show you how you can track text and graphics onto a person walking past the 360 camera. I got a lot of requests for this tutorial at NAB this year, and so I want to show you two different techniques you can use to achieve this effect. Both of these techniques are fairly straightforward, not to overcomplicate things, and should get you the effect you're looking for. For this tutorial, I'll be using Skybox Studio version 2, and if you don't have it, you can always download a free trial of it from Metal.com. And I'll also have a download for the footage I'm using today in this tutorial. That way you can also use it to follow along. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, in After Effects, what I've got here is my footage. I've got this 360 footage here, and I'm starting over here on the right-hand side. And I'll just scroll through the footage here so we can kind of see what's happening. But I'm walking past the 360 camera, getting closer to it right here. And then we can see walking all the way past the camera. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do they track text or graphics onto somebody who walks past the camera like this? There's several ways we can go about doing this, but I want to show you two techniques that are pretty easy. And the first one I'm going to do is only using text in After Effects. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is add some text onto the shot. So I'll just select the text tool and I'm just going to type in some sample text here. And what I want to do now is align the text to the center of the composition. So I'm going to select the text and come here to the align window. And if you don't see this, you can go under window and you'll see a line right there and you can open that up. I'll just come over here and I'm going to select it horizontally and vertically to center that up. All right, so after we aligned our text, the next thing we need to do is actually make our text 3D in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and check on the 3D option for the text. And after we've done that, we can go ahead and apply Project 2D onto the tracking text. So I'm just with the text selected, I'm going to come over to Effect, come down to Metal, and just find Skybox Project 2D. And that may actually shrink the size of your text because it is 3D. You can see if I check this on and off, it's going to make quite a big difference there in the actual size of the text as it's reflected with Project 2D applied to it. So what I'm going to do is I want to scale this up to be 100 for the time being. And we can actually adjust this a little bit later. I'll show you how it's going to play into things. So what I want to do now is I want to actually move my tracking text in the 3D space. I'm just going to hit P on the keyboard for position with the text selected. And I'm going to move to a point where I'm directly in the center of the shot. So right about here, and I want the text actually to be above my head. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to move it on the Y axis on the text and just position it above my head. Now I'm going to go ahead and move to the very beginning of the clip. And you can see I'm over here on the right hand side. So what we need to do now is move the text on the X axis. And as you can see, as I can pull this over, if we can get the text pretty close above my head. Now one thing you're going to see it's going to happen here though is if we move over too far, the text is going to start to cut off. So what we want to do is just move the text as far over as we can right before it starts to cut off a little bit there. You can see, I'm going to zoom in here really close so you can see this. You can see it's getting cut off. And while this is happening, I'll go ahead and just show you. If I go ahead and turn off Project 2D for Metal Skybox, you'll see the text is actually right here at the edge of the composition. And what we're doing when we move it over, it's actually getting cut off right there. And that's why it's getting cut off in the Project 2D view right there. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that and turn back on Project 2D. So just get it as close to the edge as you possibly can. And you'll see the text now kind of looks like it's on the right hand side of me and I want it to be directly above me. So that's where the scale comes into play here. So what we're going to do is just move the scale up and you can see that's going to kind of reposition the text. Now that I've got that in a place that I like it, I'm going to go ahead and create a keyframe for the scale on Project 2D. I'm also going to create a keyframe for the position on the text. Again, you can hit P on the keyboard to see the position of your text. So now I'm going to zoom out here and I'm going to move all the way to the very end of the video clip to where I'm all the way on the other side. And now what we need to do is go ahead and move the text on the x-axis. So if I zoom in here just a little bit, I'm just going to pull this on the x-axis. And you can hold shift, and actually it'll move the text a little bit quicker. So you can see it's going to buzz across there. But what we want to do on this side again is kind of move it to right when it gets cut off on the edge. So right about there. Looks pretty good, but you can see the text is now really far on my right-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the scale again. So I'll just pull this forward, and as we do that, it should automatically create a keyframe for us. I'm just going to kind of position this back up to where it should be. So that looks pretty good. So now we can go ahead and move back to the middle of our shot to kind of see how this is tracking along with us to see if it is. And this looks pretty good. It looks like the text is lagging behind me just a little bit here. It might be a little bit high. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move back to the very end above that keyframe we created. And because the text was behind me a little bit, I know I need to move it forward a little bit more. So I'm just going to come down here on the X and I'm going to move it forward just a little bit more. And I'm going to move it forward a little bit more on the scale. And if I actually want to move it down a little bit, I'll move it down on the y-axis just a little bit. Now let's go ahead and look back in the middle to see how the text is tracking with us. 
right, that's looking pretty good. Again, it's still behind me just a little bit there. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep moving that forward. All right, so I just moved the position on the X all the way to zero. If I move back to the middle here, we can see the text now looks like it's tracking with me pretty well. It still looks a little bit high though, so I'm gonna come back down here. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit more. And if I need to, I might actually move it down a little bit more at the very beginning of the keyframe here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now we can see the text is tracking with me as I walk past. And again, if I go ahead and hit U on the keyboard with the text selected, we'll see we have two different keyframes happening here with the scale and with the position. So those two are the two things we have to keyframe in order to kind of achieve this effect. Now it is a little bit of a trial and error process, but this is a much quicker way to get the text to track with a person in this type of situation. Now I've went ahead and opened up the Skybox VR player just so we can kind of see this in a 360 view so we can see the text is directly above as I walk past and I'll just kind of keep moving through here and we can take a look at this. So we can see that text does in fact track with me as I walk past. Now one thing we need to look at though is again the text at the very beginning when it appears and when it fades away. So what we can do for that is we're just gonna go ahead and keyframe the opacity. So I'm just gonna to go to the very beginning. I'm gonna hit T with the text selected for opacity. I'll create a keyframe here. I'm gonna set it at zero. Now I'm gonna hold shift and hit page down on the keyboard to move forward 10 frames. And I'll just bring this opacity up to 100%. So that'll just go ahead and fade that text on. And we can do the same thing here at the end. I'm gonna to move to the very end. I'm gonna hit shift and page up to move back 10 keyframes. And I'll just go ahead and check to create another opacity keyframe. Now move to the very end again and set it back to zero. Now I'll just go ahead and fade that text off at the end. And it looks like the text gets cut off a little bit before that actually. So if I move to about right here or so. So what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm just gonna move those opacity keyframes forward a little bit more so it just begins to fade off a little bit quicker. And obviously you can animate in your text any which way you would like for your 360 videos. It's just kind of a quick and easy way to see how that's done. Now a couple extra tips to make the text look a little bit better if you want. You can select the text and come here to effect and select perspective and bevel alpha. That'll add a little bit of a 3D edge around the text and you can adjust the settings here with that if you'd like but they can make it look a little bit more 3D and just kind of accent it a little bit better. You could obviously also add a shadow or anything like that that you want to add to it. Uh, one other thing you could do though, if you want it to fade in a little bit nicer, we can actually select the text and go to layer and pre-compose and move it into a new composition. I'll just call this text and I'm gonna click okay. And when it fades in here now, we can actually have it fade in with a blur. So I'm just gonna select the text and go to effect, metal and skybox blur. And I'll just go to the very beginning here, set the blurriness to about 10. I'll make it 20 just so we can see it. And I'm just going to hold shift and hit page down. So now the text is starting to appear and I'll just keyframe this back down to zero. And so now if we go ahead and look at this, we can see the text kind of fade in with a blurred effect applied to it. And because we're using the skybox blur effect on this, we will ensure we don't have any seam issues. If we were doing this with some text, that was maybe a little bit over here, more near the seam line or closer to the pole area. All right, now that we've seen how we can track text onto a person in After Effects using the native After Effects text, now let's take a look at how we can track graphics and images above a person's head using Skybox Composer. So I went ahead and opened up a new composition and I've already got Skybox Composer opened up here in After Effects. If you don't see this, you can always open it through the window option here and you'll see Skybox Composer. So what I wanna do for this, I wanna go ahead and add a 3D edit. And I'm gonna go ahead and select my composition. In this case, it's example two. And for the comp width, I'm gonna go ahead and make this the width of my footage, which is 3840. And then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna select center up the camera and then I am using 3D plugins if you are gonna be using any of those. And I'm gonna go ahead and select add a 3D edit. And now we can see we're looking at this from a 360 perspective. And before you actually rotate the camera or anything like that, let's go ahead and move in the timeline to when I'm right in the middle of the shot. So right about here. And this is just gonna give us a good perspective of where we wanna add our graphic into before we go ahead and rotate the camera around. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the image that I'm gonna be working with. I've got a metal image here. Just gonna drag and drop that in. 
and we'll go ahead and make that 3D. Now when I make it 3D, it's actually gonna disappear and where it's at actually is right in the middle where we are of our camera. So with the logo select, I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard and I'm gonna move it back on the Z axis and we'll start to see that appear. So there's the logo. Now I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the scale of logo. I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard and I'm gonna scale this down to about 67%. And then I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard here. I'm gonna to continue to move this back a little bit. I'm gonna set it about 500 on the Z axis. I'm gonna hit scale again. I'm gonna scale it down a little bit more. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move it up on the Y axis above my head, just like we did with the text. Just so we kind of get a good position of where that's at. We don't actually wanna create a keyframe just yet. So now that we have our logo kind of centered up where we want it to be, let's go ahead and move to the very beginning of the shot. And now I'm gonna hit C on the keyboard. I'm gonna rotate the camera here. And now with the image, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the position on the X axis. So I can just drag this on the X axis. And because we're doing this in Skybox Composer, we can go ahead and move this as far away as we want to. It's not gonna run into any cutoff issues like we did with the text. So I'm just gonna to continue to move this over. And again, now we can see the logo is kind of on the right hand side. So I just wanna go ahead and adjust this on the Y and the Z axis, so that it looks like it's in about the right position. Again, it's a little bit of a trial and error process, just like it was before with the text. So that looks pretty good right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a keyframe for position. And now let's go ahead and move all the way to the end of the shot and just rotate the camera around here. And we're gonna pull the image again back on the X axis. I'm gonna hold shift here so it moves a little bit quicker. Now we can see kind of where that's lined up and we just need to realign that back into position on the Y and the X axis. It actually looks like here I may need to rotate the logo just a little bit. So I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard for the rotation and I'm gonna rotate it on the Y axis just a touch. I don't think I need to do a keyframe for this because I think it's gonna even back out throughout the shot. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at right now. Again, this is gonna be a trial and error process and it may be a little more finicky than the text was before. So if I go ahead and move this, we can see the text looks like it's lagging behind a little bit like it did before. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit P on the keyboard for position and I'm just gonna to continue to move that forward. And when I do that, I may need to readjust the X and the Y or the Y and the Z. And so I'm just gonna pull this back and we're gonna kind of see, all right, I think we're getting somewhere pretty close. So I'm just gonna rotate this around here to see what this looks like. You know, let's do a quick RAM preview of this. And now we can see the logo does appear to be tracking fairly close to where I am when I walk through the shot. And again, we can continue to adjust this and refine this if we wanted to, depending on how exact you want it to be. But this is a quick technique that I would use to track something onto a person walking past the 360 camera. And again, when we're using an image or a motion graphic, what we're doing is we're using Skybox Composer and we're just keyframing the position of that image in the 3D space. So it's only one set of keyframes in order to achieve this effect. All right guys, hopefully you picked up a few tips in this tutorial on how to track text and images to people as they walk past the 360 camera. This has been Charles Jacob for Metal. Thanks for watching.